Hi, I'm Tony Ledford with Watts Radiant. I'm going to be on screen for the next few minutes to show you some great ideas for installing radiant floor heating. You're going to see me and my buddy Mike putting in radiant slabs, staple up onyx, pex underfloor, onyx in a thin slab, and my personal favorite, the all new Subray Model 862 Low Profile Radiant Subfloor. We'll demonstrate some new technology and show you how to heat a tile floor with new heat weave electric mats. Let's get started by looking at some radiant tubing and manifolds. We recommend both Onyx and Epex. Onyx is a high quality synthetic EPDM hose that is engineered for long life. It's built with an aramid reinforced tube and alumina shield oxygen barrier. Epex is a cross-linked polyethylene tube used for potable water and when isolated with a heat exchanger, it is used in larger installations like snow melting and athletic fields. Epex B is the same, with an EVOH oxygen barrier on the outside cover. Onyx and Epex B are used in the majority of heating installations. All the tubing in a zone comes together at the manifold. Our standard brass manifolds are available with unions and built-in balancing valves. Swedge manifolds are made of small sections that are joined in the field. Custom cut manifolds are four foot and six foot sticks with barbs placed three inches apart that are cut to length in the field. Cast brass manifolds come in sections and are joined to make longer lengths. These can be fitted with built-in balancing valves, GPM flow meters, and purge and vent assemblies. Our top of the line product is the new Watts Doomser stainless steel manifold that ships with nickel plated components. You can customize your manifold with balancing valves, GPM flow meters, and purge and vent assemblies. Onyx joins to a barbed manifold with a stainless steel shore clamp. You slide the shore clamp onto the onyx, then press the onyx onto the barb, and then slide the shore clamp back over the onyx and barb. Tighten the hex head bolt to 25 inch pounds with a standard nut driver or torque wrench. Epex has three connection options, crimp ring, slide lock, and compression. Our most popular is the crimp ring. To make a connection, you first cut the Epex with a 90 degree square cut. Slide the proper sized copper crimp ring over the tube Push the tube onto the crimp ring fitting and then slide the crimp ring over the barb. Use the proper sized crimping tool to compress the ring until the tool bottoms out. Use the crimp ring go no go gauge to make sure the fitting is sized correctly. If you prefer slide locks, first make your square cut in the apex. Push the slide lock sleeve over the apex. Lift the handle of your slide lock tool to reset and withdraw the plunger. Place the proper size expander on the tool and then place the apex onto the expander. Squeeze the handle until the tool bottoms out. Pull up on the handle to reset the tool and withdraw it. Push the apex onto a barb on the manifold. Push the proper size adapters over the yokes on the tool and turn 90 degrees to lock them in place. Position the tool between the barb and sleeve and gently squeeze the handle until the connection is complete. Finally, if you prefer a simple compression fitting, make your straight cut first. Slide the locking nut over the apex. Then place the O-ring and barb assembly on the end of the tube. Place the tube and fittings up to the threaded fittings on the manifold and slide the locking nut in place. Tighten it, but don't over tighten it with a standard wrench. The most popular installation is a radiant slab. In this case, our footings have already been poured. We're placing four by eight panels of one inch thick extruded polystyrene insulation over the gravel base. Because of excessive heat loss, we strongly recommend that you insulate the vertical edge of either the inside or the outside of the footings. 
Some local codes call for a vapor barrier, so we'll install it on top of the insulation. Use a can of upside down spray paint to mark these no heat areas and to show the zones. Study the plans to see where interior walls will be located and how the zones are laid out. Drive two rebar pieces or other temporary supports into the ground. Secure the supply and return manifolds to the rebar with tape, wire ties, or nylon cable ties, and allow room for tube connections. Lay out rolls of six by six reinforcing wire over the vapor barrier. In our first example, we'll install onyx in a double serpentine pattern. Compare the number of circuits and lengths of onyx with the zone report from Radiant Works to make sure they agree. Pick an open area and drop the onyx coil on the unwinder. Pull off all the tube and double back to make a loop with the circuit. Drag the ends of the circuit over to the manifold location and secure them in place temporarily. Leave extra length on each circuit until the manifolds are permanently mounted. Use a cable tie to make sure the tube drops straight down from the manifold to the rewire. Then begin laying out the circuit, securing the turns with cable ties. Work from the outside of the zone to the center of the zone. You may want to alternate from one side of the zone to the other, still working toward the center. Lay out all the onyx called for and make sure to avoid interior walls. The fastest way to secure your tube to rewire is with a clip tie. Clip ties come in groups of 12 and you can carry them in a pouch called a clip bag. Load the clip until you hear it click. Use the lifter to position the tube and to lift the rewire. In one motion, locate the clipper over the tube and wire and push down. Clip ties secure the tube to the rewire and they go down fast. Use the clipper to secure the tube on long centers until you see how all the circuits lay out. And then go over the entire zone, holding down the tube on 12 inch centers. Radiant Works calls for closer spacing at the perimeter where we can expect higher heat loss. This is called a banded area. Next, we'll install EPEX with a single serpentine pattern. Place a coil on the EPEX unwinder. Then cut the strapping and thread the end of the PEX through the guide ring. Push one end of the tubing on one manifold and use a cable tie to hold it to the rewire directly below. While one person walks along with the coil, another uses the clipper to secure the tubing every 12 inches or so. Work from the far end of the zone back to the manifold or toward the center of the zone. If banding is required, make sure the EPEX does not exceed its proper bend radius. If the spacing requirement is tighter than the bend radius, secure the tubing in a light bulb shape like you see here. You can install bend supports where the EPEX enters the slab to protect the tubing during any part of the concrete work. For both onyx and EPEX, try to keep the tubing at least six to eight inches away from the outside edge of the slab. This will keep your tube away from exterior walls when they're installed. Make sure the tubing is securely fastened to the rewire and located at least two inches below the slab surface. See your manual to learn more about protecting the tube from stress joints and expansion joints. If your plan doesn't call for rewire, try this radiant stapler. Load the clips over the bar and push them to the bottom. As you walk along, cover the tube and push down to secure the clip to the insulation below. After the tube and manifolds have been installed, pressure test each zone. 